message and teaching this evening. Uh, Colossians chapter 3. Holding true to my word, uh, we're going to talk about Thanksgiving again tonight. I don't think I've ever done this in all the years I've been preaching. Uh, usually we talk about Thanksgiving the Sunday before and the Wednesday before. But I just felt like our country is so unthankful. And people, I'm talking about America now, are so unthankful. Other countries, are, uh, especially the poorer ones and where they, where they appreciate everything they get, uh, are way better at this than us. But we are failing miserably in this country of being thankful. And so tonight, let's look at a very familiar verse, Colossians 3 and verse 15. And uh, the verse everybody in here should know, that's, that's where it's at in your Bible. And he said, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Well, that's a blessing right there. To the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Be ye thankful. I want us to take uh, a minute or two tonight and, uh, and look at this. I wrote down some things last night, and all that today, I, I was, uh, after I got back from the funeral, I, I began to study and read, and, and, and we read some quotes about Thanksgiving. I'm going to give you some of them tonight. And um, uh, the pilgrims back in 1621 actually set a, a day aside for public Thanksgiving. It wasn't a, a nice little holiday at that time. And, and then I think Thomas Jefferson, he wrote in too right with the Lord. And uh, he uh, uh, sort of put it aside for a few years and brushed it aside. And Abraham Lincoln actually did proclaim a day of Thanksgiving in, in uh, uh, when I think 16 something, 1789. Um, they finally declared a day of Thanksgiving and it wasn't actually a national legal holiday until 1940 or 41. So basically a recent thing for the holiday. But I'm telling you, it's a Bible thing all the way back. All the way back. And tonight, I want to look at this, uh, this scripture here. Be ye thankful. And I said last week, I was going to try to get it in our minds as a church for all of us to get this mindset. I'm going to look at the good things. I'm going to look at the blessings of God. And I'm going to ask you something. Um, you won't hurt my feelings too bad. How many of you... That thought has come back to you in the last week or you've tried to be more thankful this week. Raise your hand. Well, that's about everybody. Praise the Lord. That's good. All right, now starting tonight, let's go till next week and see if we can up that a little bit. I've caught myself two or three times and been rebuked two or three times. Now, Brother Danny, uh, you said be thankful by somebody in here, and I won't mention no names. Who's the most two critical people in here? Derek and Kelly. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He was right, though. He was right. And, uh, and she wasn't. No, she was. She was right. And, you know, when you start thinking, oh, this bad, that bad. In other words, instead of me getting up here and fussing about the empty seats, we ought to be shouting and happy about the full seats. You know, there's churches, a bunch of churches are called service halls tonight. A big, a big list of them called church off tonight. I don't understand that. I think you're looking for an excuse. But uh, anyway, uh, it, we don't want nobody to get hurt or nothing, but good night, people. It's just raining. Uh, but listen, we need that rain. Thank God for it. Now, I, you, you've heard this illustration. I say it about every year. I said this preacher was at church one Sunday, and he had a reputation for getting up every Sunday morning thanking God for the day and the weather. If it was rain or sunshine, whatever, he thanked the Lord for it because that's what we needed. And everybody knew that this preacher always thanked God for the weather. Well, one Sunday morning, it was a wretched day. I mean, the wind was blowing, trees bending over, dark clouds pouring the rain. It was horrible, horrible, like it's going to be tomorrow morning. I don't know about the wind, but tomorrow, about all day tomorrow, heavy rain, expecting flood up in the mountain. But uh, it was awful. It was awful day. And there's two ladies sitting there, and one of them punched the other and said, I bet you he ain't got nothing good to say about the weather today. And the preacher got up, and he turned around, and he said, all right, folks, we're glad everybody's here this morning, and I thank the Lord that it's not always like this. And 
So he found something to thank God for. That's not, excuse me, that's not just a cliche. It's an actual attitude that we, somebody said uh, uh, gratitude, uh, your attitude should be gratitude. Now, I want to say three things about this verse of scripture. Number one, it's not a suggestion. You did that in your Bible, right? The Lord did not say, if everything's going good, be thankful. He did not say, if you're feeling real good and your bills are paid and you got money in your pocket, be thankful. The Lord did not say, if all your families are Sunday morning, be thankful. The Lord did not say, uh, uh, you know, if you feel it, be thankful. Some people, the only time they're thankful is if they feel it. Boy, you get a good song going, and you, know, you start around, you start feeling good. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, see, now, that's the only time you praise the Lord. Something ain't right. Something ain't right. Listen, them people in them prisons I talked to you about the other day, hey, hey amen, Frankie, praising the Lord. Praise the Lord, Frankie. Hey, amen. Hallelujah. See, he's got a lot to thank God for. Look at here. He said, uh, um, them people in them prisons, they don't, they don't have a very happy life as far as, I mean, they're eat up with bugs and, and, and confinement and just get, don't get to eat out at nice restaurants and stuff like, like we do. And they are thankful. So the Lord didn't say, he didn't even say you should be. Most time preachers get up and say, we ought to be thankful. He didn't say you should be thankful. He said be thankful. And I'm gonna tell you something else. It ain't a word he's talking about. He didn't say, he didn't write in there, tell everybody you're thankful. It's not a word. It's, it's an attitude of your heart. Be thankful. You can say, thank the Lord, thank the Lord, and not be thankful. I, you can give a testimony and say, I thank the Lord for everything he's done for me, and not be thankful. Not be thankful. He said, be thankful. How do you be thankful? You've got to get your heart right. You've got to appreciate what God's done for you. You have to, it's, just like, it's a command, just like be ye holy, uh, be ye clean, be ye vigilant. Those be ye's in the Bible, be ye thankful. It is a command, it is a command. So remember, if you go to work tomorrow, school tomorrow, wherever you're going, and, and you're not thankful, you're disobeying the Lord. You're disobeying the Lord. We got this attitude of, of the Christian life is I don't do this and I don't do that and I don't go to parties and I don't get drunk and I don't do drugs and I don't uh, hang around with wicked people and go to nightclubs and stuff. That's fine. I'm proud of you. Uh, but uh, that ain't the Christian life. That's part of it. That's part of it. Uh, it's not just what you don't do. It's what you do. It's what you do. Uh, somebody said this. They said, no matter what happens this month, at least you're not a turkey. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right, amen. It is a command, it is a command, it is a command. Uh, somebody said this, that Black Friday, which is a week from Friday, you know, uh, that is the best day of the year to stay home. Uh, uh, unless, I mean, if you, if you got a bargain, bargain on something you're gonna try to get, okay, but Lord have mercy, I'm telling you, that, I, if, if I'm only going to get $10 off something, I'd rather wait till Saturday. I know. Ain't that something? They said, listen to this. This is good. Black Friday, only in America, only in America, it is a day that people trample over each other the day after the day we are thankful for what we have. <laughs> Boy, isn't that something? All day long, thank you. Boy, you've given us so much, God. We don't need a thing. All right, 12 o'clock, bless God. Uh, Two o'clock in the morning, I'm at Target knocking people out of the way. But it never, every year, somebody gets hurt. Somebody gets knocked over and everything. I know people. I know, uh, I know uh, Carissa. Uh, she, she used to get in it. She used to get into that just. I don't know, just the hype, I guess. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Best Buy is going to have computers or, or they're going to have a flat screen TV or they're going, man, it ain't, but it's usually 800, it's 400, it's three, only 299. I'll be the first one in line. I'll be, and it becomes like a, I don't know, becomes like a, 
a contest, like competition, to see who can beat who. And somebody usually gets knocked down. That's the day after Thanksgiving. We, we planned the backslide on that Friday. Not cuss somebody out, cut in front of somebody at the, at the red light, cut them off, you know, slam on the brake, bam, get out of my way. You know, uh, I, I go to, when I go to Walmart and I got my buggy like this, I'm going down through there and I see that light on, I see that light on, I see that light on. And I'm going down through there like this and that one's got two in it. I'm going, down, oh, that one's got three in it. I was going to get in this one. And I go, and then I go, I thought that was the best one. And then I see somebody else coming this way and I go real fast. I go like trying to get, ain't that something? That's awful, isn't it? That's a shame. I know I'm the only person in here that does that. Right, I'm not good. Hallelujah. Uh, but you feel bad. Uh, I, I've, I have literally put my buggy out there. Uh, excuse me, uh, were, you, were you here? That's a wicked, wicked, ungodly thing to do. It is. And you know they're going to say, no, that's all right. Go ahead, big bully. Uh, that's awful. But you know, we're nature like that. Our nature. You know what human nature is? Me first, you next. And you have to pray about that. We all have to pray about that. Especially men. Men are worse than that than women on the average. They really are. You give a woman a baby. You give a man a baby. I, he won't hold it 30 seconds. Throw it up a time or two. Okay, here, I'm done with it. The woman, she'll stick that hip out there and put that thing on there, carry it all around the house two or three hours, washing dishes and everything. Was, man, I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to do that. I, did, I put them down. There ain't nothing wrong with you. Quit crying. There's nothing wrong with you. Amen. Uh, you want to go anywhere? Shut up. Uh, that's, that's the way we are. We're, that's human nature. And I'm trying to get us to have this thanksgiving spirit. Amen. Now, this might fit somebody. But Jason back there, I know he'd get a kick out of this. And some of y'all are more legitimate. But some of you others, this will fit you. Thanksgiving is the time that you get all your dysfunctional family together and hope the cops don't get called. If you can, if, has anybody got family like that? They say, oh, Lord, there comes so-and-so, and they're mad at them, and, and she won't speak to her, and, and let's all just pray we can get through this without somebody getting in a cuss fight. That's awful, ain't it? Uh, that is awful. That's awful. It is a command. It's a command. It's a command. Uh, I've been to funerals like that. It's sad. I did one over there at that big, big funeral home. Uh, graveyard right over yonder and they had the cops cops was coming because you know somebody says well she's his ex girlfriend or something like that if she shows up I'm going to slap her and I, at a funeral at a funeral Thank good night can you not can you not chill out for a couple of hours and one time I was over there and the cop they asked me they said now are you going to stay reverend in, in case you know we have to I said, not, not really I don't, that's not my job I'm there. To, I don't want to stay there and get in a family fight, and I don't even know these people. So I left. I left. Uh, if a fight broke out, I would have tried my best to, to settle it and make peace. But I'm telling you, it's a it's a crying shame that we can't get together once or twice a year with our family without everybody fussing and arguing and getting into a big fuss. Now we go uh, and are planning again to go to my sister. Um, as you know, my my sister. She's a, I think my, the spirit of my mom fell on my sister because ever since mom's been gone, my sister, she's always good, but she's really been good to me since mom's gone. And uh, she, she gave me money for Pastor Appreciation Day, she, uh, my birthday actually that day. She was here and she always does something special for me. And, and uh, they have a cabin up between, uh, you go over the mountain like you're going to Asheville, it's in Black Mountain, you cut left going like you're going to out number nine, that goes to Lake Lure and, and Chimney Rock, that direction. And it's way, way up in the woods. There's a big old creek about as wide as from here to the wall over there. Comes right by their place, and little waterfalls, and there's trout in there. And, and it's, a cat, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. She works at Ethan Allen, so all their furniture, you know, they get dings and dents and stuff out of there. And it's really, really decorated, real nice. Just unbelievable, really. I, I can't imagine having a, something that nice and not living in it. But that's their cabin. So we go up there for Thanksgiving. 
and all my girls and everybody except for Carrie and them, they're, they're in, in Florida. Uh, they were going to have Thanksgiving dinner. And we get up there. Everybody has a good time. Everybody, my, my brother-in-law, Don, he has this little turkey. It's about this big. And before everybody gets there, he hides the turkey. Maybe out there under a tree somewhere. And we get all the kids say, all right, we're going on a turkey hunt. Who's going to find the turkey? And, um, you know, you're going out through there and you say, gobble, 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 gobble. I don't see him nowhere. And all of us, you have to go on the turkey hunt. Over the river and through the woods. And we rock. Nobody's seen the turkey. Nobody's seen the turkey. And, uh, and, and, and finally say, well, you're getting warm. You're getting warm like it's right there on top of that speaker. And they're, all the kids are looking around you know, everywhere, and can't find, finally one of them said, there it is, and boy, they have just the best time ever, hunting that turkey, Gage, and uh, Aniston, Marty, all of them, they'll be looking for that turkey, and then we'll come back, and we get ready to eat, and Debbie says, now Danny, are you ready, and I say, yep, and I say, all right, let's ask a blessing, and they all start doing this, and some of my nephews, uh, some of them I hadn't seen in a long time, and they all bow their head and I said, before we pray, <laughs> I'm going to get a word in. Amen? By the help of the Lord, I'm going to get a word in. And I say, and this might be something you can do. I say, listen, y'all, the Lord's been good to us this year. We haven't had no terrible bad news. We've had some bumps in the road, but everybody's here and they're healthy and God's blessed our family and we ought to be thankful and just remember, the same God that gave us our life can take it anytime he wants. And everybody be ready to meet the Lord. And you know, they just some of them just sort of like, God, have to come here and get preached to. Yeah, yeah, you do. You sure do. Really. I mean, my goodness, God has given us everything we've got. He's given us life and breath. It's a, it's a disgrace. We dig into a big old turkey and throw away more food than a lot of people eat in, in other places. So let's, let's be thankful. It is a command. It's a command of God. And maybe you can do that at your, I'm not talking about being mean or derogatory or, you know, talking down to everybody, but put in a good witness. Put in a good witness. May not, they may not be here next year. You may not be here next year. None of us might. So it's a good time to get your family together and be a blessing, okay? All right, anybody want to say anything about that right there, about your family or something or something good, something bad? Um, anybody right quick? All right, number two. Number two, it should be a normal reaction. You'd think it'd be normal to be thankful. If somebody walks up to you and gives you something, the normal reaction, if you're a decent, halfway smart person, Thank you, thank you. You know, we got a generation that, that expects it. And then you give it to them, they just turn around and run off. Uh, one thing I appreciate about Kelly with Ethan and, and, and uh, Molly, she teaches them to say thank you, thank you. My mom always told us, say, if somebody gives you something, say thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Kids, are, kids nowadays, they'll just grab it and take off running. I mean, if you get pizza on, on bus kids pizza, most of them will just grab it and run. And that ain't really their fault. It's somebody, it's some parents' fault somewhere for not teaching them. Teach your kids to be thankful, to be thankful. It should be a normal reaction. Amen. Um, when one man said, when I started counting my blessings, uh, my whole life turned around. One man said it like this. Uh, this little boy's at somebody's house and he's eating. And we sat down to eat. Everybody just started eating. He said, don't y'all ask the blessing? And they said, no, we don't do that here. He said, you're just like my dog. You just start right in. And that's true. Most people do that. Just sit down and eat a big old $500 meal for the family and don't even look up where it come from. We better look up where it come from, people. God's got our life in his hands. He can take it anytime he chooses. And buddy, we should be a normal thing to be thankful. You ought to be thankful just for your health and life. God gave you 86,400 seconds a day, 1,440 minutes. A minute's pretty long. 
If you don't uh, set your, look at your uh, watch and watch how long it takes a minute to go. 1,440 of them every single day we've got. And most of you blow a 1,000 of them and uh, maybe more than that. 400 minutes a day, do you do something for God or somebody else? I doubt it. Five minutes a day? Out of, so you got 1,300 or 1,435 left over. Uh, God's been good to us. Your health. Uh, you know, when I'm, as, as I'm getting older, I'm, you know, I think more and more and more about your health, about your health. You don't think about it much when you're young. But, buddy, when you start getting older, you start thinking, it's not, I'm not always going to feel like it. But it's downhill from here on, man. I mean, most of you, most of the time, you're 40 is downhill from then on. Uh, it's, I mean, there ain't no going back to them 18 and 20 and 22. It's, it's down this way from here on. Be thankful for your health. If you can go to church, go to church. Don't go loafing off on Sunday and lay out of church and, uh, you know, the, the, to go goofing off. And, and if you go on vacation, go to church. You don't lay out of church when you go on vacation, I hope. Surely the Lord, surely the Lord, you don't lay out of church. How can, I don't see how you can do that and come back. That's hypocritical. I mean, when we're on vacation, ask her. We go to church. We find, it may not be much of one, but we'll find one somewhere that's having church, service and we'll go. You know why? Of course, I ain't never gone on Sunday. No way. I, I preached uh, every Sunday uh, this year, every Sunday. I ain't missed one. And I ain't, I don't, Lord, I don't know how many years unless it's a, one of the youth rallies Sundays or something when somebody else preached. But um, be thankful, y'all. I'm, I'm scared not to be thankful. You start taking God's blessings for granted, it'll get you in trouble. You woke up healthy and in your right mind. Sometimes I feel good for so long that when I have a little pain or get sick, I think, oh, boy, I forgot what it feels like to hurt and be sick. Boy, it don't take me but about five minutes of that. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, hell, I don't like that feeling bad. I don't like that being having the flu. Now, you know, the flu shots, I don't know you. I don't know you. I've heard, I hear it preached both ways. I don't, I don't take one, but I'm not telling you not to. Don't, t- don't die of the flu and blame me. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't think I've ever took one. Maybe 10 years ago or something, I, it didn't do no different. I think Heather taught me into it. Uh, but... Uh, I don't, I'm not saying you shouldn't. Maybe you should. I don't know. Maybe they're shooting, shooting wickedness in you. I, that's what people believe or some kind of disease. Or, or maybe they are. I don't know. I don't know what to do about it. I can tell you this. Pray and do right and do the best you can and thank God for what health you've got. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. Because, buddy, you get up every day and say, thank you, Lord. I can think. I can see. I can hear. I can eat. I've got an appetite. I can walk. I can feel. There's stuff about us we don't even know. There's stuff scientists ain't even discovered about our psyche, our mind. They don't even know exists. So I pray, Lord, help all that stuff we ain't even discovered yet. Uh, Make me healthy. Have mercy on me, God. I don't think it's a sin to pray that the Lord will keep you, you know, healthy and and wise and all that and in your right mind. I don't think that's a sin. Um, So uh, uh, be... It should be a normal reaction for your food. You know what most people's thankful for this time of year? Elastic waistbands. Ain't you, ain't you glad they invented them pants? They even got them for men now. I think mean, oh, it's sickening. Uh, even, even men's pants you buy now stretch. I never thought I'd see men's pants. Blue jeans. But, but that's not a bad idea, really. Because I used to have, years ago, when I had so much trouble, I had two sets of pants by the... Trouble pants and normal pants. And when I was going through trouble, I pulled out my trouble pants. They was real little. My waist got down to 31, 30, 30, because some of my pants are 31 now. And then when I got, when everything was going good, I got up to 34. That means you get fat when, you, when God's blessed you so much. You start getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Boy, you have some trouble. Somebody told me they was having marriage trouble one time, and I said, that's the best time in the world going to die when you're having marriage trouble. You can lose weight without even trying. You worry it off. And uh, uh, I don't know if you've ever worried it off. You feel like you're burning inside. I told somebody the other day, they're having marriage trouble, and they said, I just feel like my stomach stays in knots. I said, that's the Lord burning the sin out of you. And, and that, 
that, that hurts, that hurts. But anyway, uh, they invented them elastic pants and waistbands, and so, you know, ain't nothing wrong with that, I don't guess. Um, um, one, 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 somebody said uh, that these, these, our generation, they think Noah had a, called an architect to have that ark built and, uh, and got a company to come in and build the ark and, and the children of Israel stayed in five-star motels the whole time they was in the wilderness, 40 years now, 40 years. I think they took at least two vacations a year, wouldn't you? Don't you think during all them 40 years, the children of Israel said, hey, we're going to the beach this week, Moses. I'll see you in about a week and a half. And they went out and they said, no, no, no. They said, we're dead. None, none. They didn't go to Gatlinburg. They didn't go to Florida. They didn't go to New York City. They didn't do nothing 40 years, and God blessed them. And we get vacations. God's blessed us that we can take some time off. And a lot of times, we're unthankful. Amen? They think Jesus fed the 5,000 with Kentucky Fried Chicken and got at a restaurant and, you know, and divided out biscuits and, and the Last Supper was at Ruth Chris or somewhere. And they, uh, but people didn't always live like we live nowadays. Pe- people didn't used to live like that. And it seemed like they were more thankful back then than we are now when we got everything. So let's be thankful. Let's be thankful. Let's be thankful. Somebody said this. Don't forget Saturday night, set your scales back 10 pounds. <laughs> that way you, that way. I had, let me tell you what happened to me. I had uh, camp meeting, which is always a bad time for me because I don't run as much and then we eat them big meals here and there it is, you got to eat it and then we'd take preachers out or something at night. So that's two big ones a day and I never eat two big meals a day, never. I think it's really bad for you to eat big two days in a row. I think it's bad for you. You don't have time to get rid of that first pile and here goes another big pile down there. If you eat big one day, really take it easy the next day. And so I eat I Wednesday night because I fast Wednesday. I think I eat Wednesday night. And then Thursday, eat big. Thursday night, man. Friday, Friday night. Saturday, people brought lasagna. Miss Lorraine said, here, we got this left over. Take it to your company, Brother Danny. I took it to my company, all right. I was the company. Uh, uh, we, I eat, we eat. Then the very next week, I went to Florida. Down there, as soon as I get there. Preacher says, you hungry? Can I take you eat anything, Brother Danny? I said, uh, I reckon. Talk me into it. And he took me to some, uh, I think, he, he took me, I ate fish, I think, three out of five days down there. This big shrimp place, big old fat shrimp, that big, because they're fresh. And, and you know, it's free. And the, their church paid for it, and somebody did. I don't know who did. And I'm telling you, I ate that week. Count meeting, Florida. Then the next week was Gatlinburg. And there's my girl saying, Daddy, we want to go to um, Paula Deans. They want to go to Paula Deans. Brother Derek was trying to get me to go to that big steakhouse. I had rather had the steakhouse. Uh, but uh, my billfold said, Paula Deans is bad enough. Uh, <laughs> And I wouldn't even go to Paul Dean's. I'd never go because it costs too much, $21 a person. But they said, now, it's supposed to be the couple's trip. Be romantic. Your wife wants I said, okay. She loved it. And it's a good place. I don't know if y'all ever eat there. But bless God, if I'm going to pay $45, I'm going to eat $45. Chicken, I forgot what all we had. So there's again, there's youth, I mean, the camp meeting, Florida, Gatlinburg, then I turn right around and go, uh, where did I go the next week? Oh, down there at that wedding in Savannah, and, and they, they took us out after wedding practice. Late again, here we go, eating again at night. Big mistake, big mistake. And uh, I, they, they took me to this place, and there they said, here, brother, preacher, get whatever you want. That's four weeks in a row. And boy, I'm telling you, I got my belt tied on right now. Y'all think, oh, Brother Danny, you're, you're so little. You, you, it don't take, I can tell it in a second. I can tell it. Like take, take, um, take this thing right here. I don't know. That made, oh, that, raised, that probably weighs maybe 10 pounds right there. You know the difference in that? Like what? <laughs> it's a difference. And you know what? You start thinking, well, now here it is Thanksgiving. 
And everybody knows what's right after Thanksgiving, Christmas. And you ain't outside as much, and the weather's cold. So listen, we ought to be thankful. We ought to be thankful. We, Lord have mercy, God's been good to us. Good night, he's been good to us. Uh, let me just say this and I'll be through. I, I'm, I was gonna make this short. Number three, this being thankful leads you to spiritual thinking. Being thankful is the next, next step is thinking spiritual. Uh, if you're not thankful for what you've got, uh, you won't be thankful for what, what's gonna be like, like coming to church. An attitude of gratitude is what, I, what I'm saying. Uh, if you're really thankful, you share. You can say you're thankful all day long, run to church and raise your hand, but if you're really thankful, you know what you'll do? You'll share, you'll help somebody else. I'm not telling you what, what charities to give to or anything like that. I, I, some of them are, are, are a scam. It's, it's been shown. I, I got Salvation Army out here in front of Rule King uh, yesterday when I went there, and I know the guy, and I heard that the Salvation Army is not what it once was. Back in the hundred days of General William Booth, Booth, that was a soul-winning organization. But they say still do a lot of good work all over the world, and so I'm not against helping somebody like that. I tell you, we got, we got families right here in our church. If you want to help somebody, could use some help. You tell me, and I'll tell you. You can slip them, slip them 40 bucks, slip them 50 bucks, slip them 100 bucks if you can. Uh, Thanksgiving will cause you to share with others, to visit the sick, uh, somebody that's sick, Miss Dot. Uh, uh, you know, I'd say call Miss Dot, but she can't, she can't hear good, and, and you can't really talk to her on the phone, but just somebody like that that's really, really having a hard time. You know, Thanksgiving, if you're thankful for what God has done for you, uh, here's the way we are. I said a man one time, he was at the post office somewhere, and he had his hand in a cast. He broke his hand or something, and he's trying to fill out this card like a postcard and send it somewhere, and he said, ma'am, would you fill this out for me? And she came over and said, yes, sir, and he said, da-da-da, name, da-da-da, address. She wrote it all down, wrote it all down. Took five minutes there to help that guy out. And he looked at it, and she, and zip code, finally wrote it down, and he said, put down there at the bottom, P.S., excuse the bad handwriting. I thought, my goodness. How many of you have seen people do that? That exact, you do something nice for people, but that ain't good enough. They'll find something wrong with that. They'll gripe about this, gripe about that, uh, gripe about everything, gripe about the food, gripe about it ain't right, it ain't this. If, if I go to a restaurant and my food ain't right, I just thought, well, I should have had enough sense to get something else. I don't blame them. I mean, you know, unless it's just horrible or poison or something. I, I didn't want to be a crybaby. And uh, I, I know people, I know Christian people that order a steak and eat half of it and tell them this ain't cooked right and get back just so they won't have to pay for it. I've seen them, done, I've seen them, heard them doing it. You know, that, that's wicked. That is so wicked. Or is that way you can get you another free one and have one and a half. Um, we ought to be thankful for what God gives us. Amen? Like AJ's. Amen? That's right. If you're really thankful, you'll share. If you're thankful for what you have, you'll wind up getting more. If you're thankful for what God gives you, you'll wind up getting more. Um, I'm gonna give you this little thing right here and I'm done. I, I really wanted to finish with that, with that handwriting story there, but somebody said this. Uh, somebody was graphing and they said, uh, that mean old policeman put me in the, in the back seat and I already called shotgun. <laughs> you know, uh, I call shotgun. You ain't gonna, you know, a policeman will get you for that. All right, so let's remember, be thankful. Three things. Number one, it's a command, not a suggestion. Number two, it's a normal reaction. It's a normal reaction to be thankful. Number three, it'll lead you to spiritual thinking. Amen. Don't forget what I said, Brother Jason. I thought about y'all and my, my family up in West Virginia especially. Thanksgiving is a time to get our dysfunctional family together and hope the cops don't get called. <laughs> All of us, how many of y'all have had that worry before so in holidays? I have half of us in here. All right, amen. Let's stand. We'll just have a word of prayer. And be careful driving home tonight. 
it's, a, it's, it's ugly. Even if it ain't freezing, it's ugly out there, so be careful. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. And Lord, we want to be truly thankful for your blessings on us. Yes, there ain't a one of us in here deserves your blessings. Thank you for dying on the cross oh, yes. to pay the price for our sin. Yes, Lord. Lord, you didn't have to do that. You could have left us alone. We'd have died and went to hell. But Lord, you loved us and washed us from our sins in your own precious blood. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the church. Thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for help. Thank you for our, our country that we live in. Thank you for our, our community that we live in. Thank you, Lord, uh, for our water and our, our clothes and our food and, our, and our, uh, the bed we sleep in, Lord, and our, our, just our, time, our families, God. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Help us to be in a thankful spirit now uh, in these days ahead. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake, amen. Amen. God bless you.